Slaughter, and I'm a homeschool mom to three girls. I've been homeschooling for seven years. I did do the math now, and I'm going to be sharing with you what we are using this year for fifth grade. So I'm going to try to get right to it and hopefully give you guys a good thorough explanation of each of these items. Remember, if you like this video, let me know because in order for me to keep making any kind of content, I want to be able to help you. I want to know what you want to see. If you want to see an in-depth in -depth flip through of any of these things, also let me know. And if you like this video, let me know so that YouTube shares my video to other people to be able to see it. Um, so first of all, we are a classical conversations family. So I'm going to get started with the spine of what we use. There's a hair tickling my leg. Okay, and so we're a classical conversations family. And so for my fifth grader, she will be in um, foundations and also essentials, which is the um, grammar and writing program in classical conversations. And so a lot of times I get asked what we do and what this is, and it's actually a complex answer and people get very confused. So I'm gonna try to explain this to make it make sense to someone on the outside of what it is and kind of what we do. So um, if you are fourth grade to sixth grade, you do the essentials program. But going into foundations, anywhere from preschool up to that fourth, fifth and sixth grade level, you're gonna be doing foundations. Once you hit the fourth grade level, you do foundations and you do essentials, but in the very beginning, you just do foundations. So um, we um, Classical Conversations does all their learning in cycles. So we have cycle one, cycle two, and cycle three. Cycle one, everyone learns the same information. It's a different science, it's a different time period and it rotates in these cycles. So you go through these cycles of learning and this information multiple times before you hit the next level, which is called challenge. The challenge level is the middle school and high school classes. Oh my gosh, there's a fly. <laughs> the middle school and high school classes. And I have one child going into challenge A. So we have challenge A, challenge B for middle school, seventh and eighth-ish grade. And then you have challenge one, two, three, and four, which would be the um, ninth, 10th, 11th, and 12th grade. So um, my oldest daughter, who I showed you guys a video on what we're using for high school is no longer doing challenge because um, her group is splitting up and she don't want to go find a new one. It's not because we did not like it or anything like that. We love it. Um, I did see where this would work better for some kids and maybe not for other kids because it was very hard. It took a lot of effort and a lot of work and could be very stressful on certain children. So definitely not for everybody in those challenge years. But Foundations has been a spine. And honestly, I don't know what I would have done in the beginning of my homeschool journey if I wouldn't have met my friend who introduced me to this, my sweet friend, Ashley. Hi, Ashley, if you ever watch this. Um, introduced me to Classical Conversations and honestly, I jumped right in. I became a tutor right off the bat. I had no idea what I was doing. And it was my first year homeschooling and also my first year to tutor. And to tutor is kind of like, oh my gosh, a lie! To tutor is kind of like being a teacher, but we're not called teachers because we are tutoring. Um, the purpose of a tutor is to model how to do this and to model information to the parent so that the parent feels equipped to go home and to teach their children what they've learned at our co-op. So we meet one day a week. And on that one day a week, the challenge kids meet, the foundations kids meet, and then they meet in the morning time. And then from one to three, the essentials class meets, which is the writing and the grammar class. So if you do classical conversations at home, you mainly only have to utilize what they recommend is a solid math curriculum and um, a good reading and, and maybe some grammar and spelling in the younger years until you get to that level four. 
So if you don't do a lot of that though, when you hit essentials, it is overload. It's a lot of information. It's so much information that it's, you go through the same course three times. And by the third time, you're supposed to have mastered the information. The first year, you're only supposed to take bits and pieces. You grab a little here. The second year, you grab a little more and a little more. And then that third year, you're like, ah, okay, get it. And honestly, I've been through it several times with different kids. And my first year, it was over my head. The second year, I, I kind of was getting a hang of it. And now I'm just now feeling confident that I know how to do this stuff. <laughs> so it's been very great for me as well. I just didn't learn a lot of this stuff. I never learned how to diagram a sentence a day in my life. And they diagram sentences. And they go from beginner all the way to the very end. Every single year it gets really hard and it's very complex. But it's okay if they don't grasp it all the first year. So you have first year, second year, third year students that go through the program. And by the end they have absorbed and grabbed and hopefully understand. So the foundations program where we meet in the morning is going to be where we present information the tutor will present information in a really fun chant or way and that's the first 30 minutes of the class that's called new grammar and that's where we do our memory work or our memorization of a 15 minute timeline where they learn from beginning of creation to current events and it's really lengthy but it's an amazing thing and tool that i feel like my kids have now and I, to be honest, learning that timeline for me was amazing because there were parts in history um, growing up that I just didn't understand where they placed in the overall timeline of things. And learning things like um, certain things that came before Jesus that I thought were after him and just, it made so much more sense of the world to me. But we learn a timeline and they learn just a little piece of it each week. And then they will learn a history sentence. And the history sentence will have dates, names, and it'll be a fun song that they'll learn um, of that time period that we are studying. So typically cycle one is gonna be your ancient history. Uh, and then cycle two is gonna be your medieval history. And then cycle three is all US history. And we're doing cycle two this year. And um, so you present the information, they learn that history sentence, and then we learn Latin. We memorize either um, like verb conjugations or uh, noun declensions. And in cycle three, we actually memorize John one in English and in Latin. And it's pretty awesome and very impressive, I feel like, because you as the parent learn so much with them. So we do Latin and then we learn some type of grammar. So they'll learn lots of definitions of things, um, complete charts. Like one year they learn all the prepositions. Um, all, they do all the helping verbs, all the linking verbs, all the things. It's so impressive. And so when they get into essentials and they fill out these charts, these charts are an overabundant amount of information where they're learning everything <laughs> and they have to memorize them. So having those nuggets in their brain is very, very helpful. So you can ask these kids what's a verb and they know it in definition. So they'll do an English, then we do geography. And the geography and the history and classical conversations is why I love it so much is because it is so heavy in history and geography. And so these little kids have been doing these geography, learning these places on the world from preschool. And it's pretty impressive, it's amazing. And challenge A, which is the seventh grade one that I was talking about, they do cartography. I also mentioned in my last video that my daughter that did it um, pre in previous years, they learn how to map draw. They can end up drawing every portion of the world when it's over. Um, but having all of this past knowledge of these maps, in cycle three, they learn the US history, um, all, the, all the states and capitals and all of that. Um, in cycle one, we learn things like that is in the old, that some of the things aren't even called that anymore. I thought that was weird at first. And then one day I was reading my Bible and I was reading some chapter in Acts and I seen where Paul had went to, um, all these four different places. And I knew where every single place was because some of the places aren't called that anymore. And then it clicked for me why we're learning this the way that we do. So 
Um, this year, I think we're focusing on a lot of Europe. And if you go, history is going to be Renaissance, medieval. So they all are integrated together that way. So they do a lot of geography and these kids learn it. I mean, it's memorized. It's mind blowing. Like they will blow your mind. They're so smart. And okay. So I said Latin, English, history, geography, we do math. And so the math isn't where, you know, the tutor goes and teaches the kids how to do math. They do a lot more of that in essentials or they do a lot of math games to sharpen their math skills and their mental math. Math and foundations looks a lot different because it is memorizing your math facts, memorizing laws. Um, you're just memorizing things about math that are gonna really help you uh, later on in your math journey. So, and they have come in really handy to know the associative law. Um, why does a preschooler need to know that? They don't, but by the time they've done it year after year, it's in their brain and when they do need it, they already know what it is. After grammar, we go into science or presentation, depending on where you're at. But this, for science, what we do is we do a project, some type of experiment once a week. So all the kids gather around, we get hands on and we do some type of experiment that typically, let's get real, unless you're um, a homeschool unicorn, you're, I don't, I never did a lot of high, you know, experiments at home. Now for my high school this year, we're gonna have to for it to count as um, a lab credit, but you know, um, this is one of those things that they get there. And then we go into a fine art. And so for that fine art for six weeks, it is music theory for six weeks, it is art, art history, um, where we study artists and we use their art technique and learn about that artist. Another one for art is we do drawing, the basics, the oils, the basics of drawing. And so for each six weeks, and in that music theory one, we do 10 whistle and they learn to play just a little bit and how to read music, just the basics of things, not anything too crazy. Um, but those are all things that my kiddos get that I probably wouldn't get if I didn't have CC. Um, and then the last six weeks they do orchestra. So that's fun too. And they listen to, they have to learn to listen to classical music and stuff like that. Then, um, and part of the 30 minutes we do presentation time. And this is where each child has to get up in front of the class and present on something. And typically they pick, they show the class something, they explain how to make something, tell a joke, um, that type of thing, but they get in front of the class and they have to talk and it's uncomfortable, but it helps them learn to, you know, how to do presentations and it's awkward and weird at first and then it becomes normal and just a part of life. So you get better at it the more you do it to get in front of your peers and talk. And some people are naturally just better at that type of thing. So then the last 30 minutes of class, we do review games. So we'll play some type of game. We'll review all the grammar that we've learned or the information that we've learned up until that point and just to help them in their memory. And then we have lunch and typically a fun recess outside where they play with their friends. And then we go into our writing and grammar class. So essentials, what does essentials look like? Well, I can't show you their stuff, but I can show you, you get a big guide that's really big like this, teaches you how to teach it, what to do, what to say, all the things. And so as a parent in essentials, you are observing what to do and um, how to teach it and you're learning and you're modeling being a good student. So we also use um, IEW for our writing class and this is the medieval history based writing lesson, but each year it changes. So this is for cycle two, cycle three. This is the American history one and cycle one. We use um, the ancient history writing lessons. IEW has a ton of vocabulary and they're in these little cards like this. So they, this is where they get their vocabulary. They get to put their vocabulary in their writings. Um, IEW is a fantastic writing curriculum and um, Andrew Poudoir, he's fantastic. So you definitely should check them out. Um, a lot of co-ops teach IEW if you could find a class 
Um, it's a great way to teach writing and it's very systematic in the way that it teaches writing. So it's really easy for struggling writers to learn how to write. And they pretty much teach you to be able to take information from any piece of writing and rewrite it. And, um, or for, you write from pictures, lots of different things, summarizing, can't remember them all at the moment, but yes. So, and then this awesome little gadget that I got this year to add to our writing, a word right now, it's basically a thesaurus, but it's a pretty amazing one. Definitely worth the money if you need one for your writing. It has um, words for exuberance. Here are adjectives, adverbs, and verbs. And then you can write your own additional words that you think of so that this just helps you um, work to find different words for for your writing to enhance it and to make it sound better to use stronger verbs quality adjectives it really focuses on things like that to elaborate your writing uh, really well and so that's what that is okay so that's our spine so i'm going to show you what i supplement and what else i do at home um, there's a couple of things here that's still from last year that we started in the middle of the year. So we didn't finish it and we're going to go ahead and finish before I buy the new for next year. Um, so one of those things is math and we are doing math right now, math four with BJU press. And we are doing the distance online version of this curriculum. Love it. It's amazing. We'll probably go right into level five. Um, there is a chance that we might try the good and the beautiful math, but this just works really well. Um, so this is my child that's very mathy. She loves math. She's really um, good at math. It comes more naturally. It's really easy for her. Um, and BJU is amazing. One thing I love that about their math is when you order pretty much any of their levels. I don't know. I think maybe after eighth grade, this may stop or before eighth grade, maybe it's just sixth but they send you a book of manipulatives and they're in cardstock that you just get to kind of pop out. It has everything from money to fractions to, you know, hundreds, tens, ones, mats. It has all those things that are really expensive if you buy those with any other math curriculum. And so I have used so many different math, you guys. I have used Right Start Math. I've used Saxon Math. I've used Math Mammoth. I've used um, Master Books Math. I have used BJU Math. I know there's another one. We've used teaching textbooks. I've used so many different math. This is by far my favorite math out of all the ones we've used so far. Um, so it's really colorful. It seems to be really advanced to compare to some of the other ones that we've used. And um, I love how um, when you learn long division or when you learn long multiplication problems that it has, it's in little boxes. So I'll try to show you kind of what boxes I'm talking about. It keeps everything lined up really well. This is book number four. I'm trying to show you, you know, maybe what, here is a picture or here's a fraction. This is very traditional style of math. So if you're not a traditional homeschooler, this may not work for you. However, I feel like it doesn't get enough love. And BJU Math is one of the best math programs that I have ever used. It's very solid, very, very, very good um, in giving them all the information that they learn. It's not, it doesn't seem to be spiral, but I will say that her math has a daily review where she just does like a little bitty strip of review so it does spiral a little bit of stuff in there but it is one chapter is over one topic they move on to the next topic so uh i'm not really sure if that would be mastery approach or not but they do review things and this is level four so she'll be doing level five we switched math in January so we're still doing math currently and when we finish we will be moving on to level five okay so I also bought her 
handwriting level five from the good and the beautiful we have in the past always done a reason for handwriting and it's been really great i've loved it she's loved it and one of the reasons we love it so much is because in their lessons it will have them write a scripture in cursive and it sent like in the back it has blank writing paper that they can color that has some pictures and they'll write the scripture and then it tells them to mail it to someone so it's been really great for her to practice writing her address writing her grandparents address and it's been really sweet for them to open the mail and get a little scripture and paper that she colored and that is called a reason for handwriting if you're wondering and one of the reasons that I want to try this one is because I like just how simple it is and how easy it looks like it's just gonna incorporate into everything. I also like that it has little drawing, little assignments. Well, I mean, I guess, you, I don't know if they're assignments, but they look fun. And it seems to be different every day. One of the reasons that I did pick it is because we're still having kind of trouble with this. And I love this, that it's reiterating that again. So I haven't used this yet. I won't be able to tell you, I don't have a review for this right at the moment. A Reason for Handwriting is a great um, program or a great course. The one that we used to learn cursive was the level T. It's a transition book. So the first half of the book is um, regular regular print and the second half is beginning cursive and then it goes into more cursive throughout the year so we loved it um, it's a wonderful um, cursive course so for spelling she picked the spelling out and classical conversations in the essentials program has spelling but we don't particularly love it because it gets boring and then it's a fight and that kind of thing um, however, I kind of wish that we would just be able to do it and add it to our stuff, but she has picked out a reason for spelling and I'm going to show you why she picked this out. We're going to see how it goes. I'll show you what a week looks like. So on day one, it has not this one. Sorry, that's day. day one. It is a dictation. You dictate them the, the words, they write them. It's like a pretest, basically. See which ones they know. It has these. I've heard these little boxes are really helpful in helping them memorize and learn how to spell. And then on this one, it has play hide and seek with your words, other word forms of the word, and then there's fun ways to spell. So this has just where they practice spelling, sorry, in a lot of different ways. So here it says, create a crossword puzzle. Spell your words on a voice recorder. Spell your words with paint. Bounce a ball as you spell your words. She said this looked really fun and this is why she wanted to use it. So then we will have dictionary skills, alphabetical order, more dictation, um, proofreading. I'll let you guys see what this looks like. And I've never used a reason for spelling, so I have loved their handwriting, like I just said, but then it has a game. And then they would just take a test to see um, how they have learned their words. So we may add where she practices these a little more each day, but we're going to give it a whirl and see how it goes and see how it goes. And if it don't go, we're just going to go right back to writing our word list with classical conversations and doing plain writing them, dictating them, learning the words. So we'll see how well she does with that. Okay. So for reading, we are also doing another BJU press that we have been doing since the middle of the year. I, we were just reading novels and just classic literature and it was working good. She loves to read those types of books, but there was things that I felt like they were missing out on. So we did BJU Press uh, reading four, and she's not done with this. We are gonna finish this before we move on to level five. So um, it's been really amazing. The, the video lessons on this is brand new. They're really great, really engaging. She's came to me and told me several different things about poems. I don't really have to teach her this. 
I just have to test her and they have um, a grading rubric that tells you how to test them and how to test their verbal reading, their silent reading. And then they have these little tests that will test their comprehension as well. So that was something that I really needed and really wanted and was really um, one of the main reasons that I did a switcheroo. But the, the reader in this has a lot of different variety. It has a lot of great um, like Bible stories. The fly. It has a lot of great Bible stories. It has a lot of poetry. Things she was not reading when we were just doing the books. It also has um, some plays. And again, this is very traditional in this reading. But it's just a different story. And every day, and she'll read a part of it. And then it does a little worksheet for comprehension. The worksheets do a little bit more than comprehension, though. It does a lot of things with character, moral character, and um, similarities, differences, and really looking at um, stuff that they're doing more in depth than just reading something and me saying, well, tell me about the story, which is basically where we were at in our reading before this. One of the things is that they learn the genre. So they'll learn if it's a fable. They learn about genres. That One of the things I thought was cool, this one's a folk tale. I'm trying to remember some of these, but these are the things where she said, yeah, mom, that's a a folk tale and it has a simile and it you know and she had learned that just from watching this sweet little videos where this teacher lady is on the screen and she's engaging and um, they're really 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 great so with the BJU press I have two classes that she's doing online they have a teacher the teacher explains the concept I don't teach the class I help her with her math because sometimes she needs help but I don't teach her the concept, she watches the lady. The lady will bring and tell her what you need this page for today, you need this um, manipulative for the, for the day, and sometimes they need them and sometimes they don't. And then they will have a fact review sheet that will have just a few um, math facts on there that she'll do each day as well. She pulls all that out, turns it on, learns the lesson. If she doesn't quite understand it, I'll come over there and help her, but I don't teach the math lesson. And I love it. I love um, the way that they teach. I love that it's simple and it's sweet. And she enjoys this math a lot. Now, I bought this math, I think, at the very beginning of January, maybe the end of December. And this has already been redone. So if I give you a, re a review of this one, the, the new one is going to be similar. But it is a different video, a different teaching. And it has been updated from this one. So it's amazing. Love it. And reading for sweet teaching. So what these videos are designed to do is the teacher will come on and they are teaching directly to your students. So it is kind of like a one-on-one -on -one lesson that your kids get to have with someone other than you. So I love to have a BJU course that's an online course from here or there once in a while to just help me and for them to get teaching and instruction from someone other than me, which is really awesome and really helpful. Okay, so for science, the really cool thing about science, we line our science up with what we're doing at Classical Conversations. So this year, we're gonna be studying ecology, space, and physics. And I might be missing one. I'm about to look, but what I did this year, and I've done it different previous years, but what we're doing this year, and I also didn't know about these, but BJ, um, not BJU, <laughs> the Good and the Beautiful science units are so amazing. Probably the most amazing science that I've ever found, and I will do a review. Um, the only one I've ever used is botany, and it is incredible. I was, oh my gosh, I was blown away with the Good and the Beautiful Botany. It was, it was amazing. Loved it, loved it, hands down. So I went and I bought all the units to match up to what we're going to be doing. So the first one that I got here, oh lower, these are just in a pile. So I'm going to have to fix this, show you how they look. Ah. 
Okay, so one of the things is the Good and the Beautiful are redoing all their science units. So I have some of the older ones and then some of the new ones, and you'll see the difference. In the old ones, you have to take this apart, put it in a binder. Um, you have to laminate a few things. I mean, you don't have to, but it's definitely better if you do. And I personally enjoy that. It is so much fun. I get excited. Vocab words, beautiful pictures. Um, the lessons are so short and engaging and there's something hands-on almost for them to do every single day. And it's fun for my fifth grader. It was fun for my seventh grader. And my little neighbor will come over and do this with us. And she's like, don't do school without me. She loved it. Botany was so much fun and I'm just amazed. So I got ecosystems to go with our science that we're gonna be doing and memorizing the science facts and the science um, projects that we will be doing in classical conversations. So they'll line up and that's pretty much what we're doing. So I also got the books that they, they offer that go with this science. And the sweet thing about those units is they will have little books that they get to cut out and you get to read that are they're just so cute. I just think it's the greatest science. They did such an amazing job making these. Um, it's not overwhelming. And I think that's what also makes it so great is it's not an overwhelming amount of information, but just enough to really learn it. Um, and to what I loved about it is how much my kids loved it. That was different. And my kids have loved science. I've always tried to make it fun, but this was so fun and so enjoyable. And then it also pointed to God in such a way that other things that I've done doesn't. And I've used Christian curriculum, but it just brought a sense of wonder, if that makes any sense. And then we are using the space. This one hasn't been redone yet. Space science. So excited to do this one. I also got the books that come with it. The little sweet books that they write, they're amazing. And then Galileo, who we're also gonna be studying in history. I'm so excited. So I'm, I'm just pumped for this book. We're probably gonna do this as a read aloud. My oldest daughter studied him last year in Challenge B and she had to make a model of a um, telescope. And so she knows him too. So I'll probably make her listen to this as well. So, so excited. Okay, then one of the other ones. Now this is one of the new versions. So this is different. This one comes bound. See here? It's also a little bit thinner because your stuff is in here. And I'm gonna show you what the, these are what the vocab words look like that you cut out. And they, they tell you to have a science wall, so this stuff is just kind of in front of them every day. You, they're just so cute. It also has, each of these have a supply list right at the front, so you know, okay, I need this, 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 and this, I go get it, or don't. Whatever you wanna do, you can pick and choose. Fun times in homeschool. So this is Motion and Simple Machines. I, even thought about adding energy, but I don't think it was available or they're making it. Anyways, I don't know. I may do energy as well and cram it in here at, at a later point. I don't know. These you're only supposed to do a couple days a week and um, I think we would just devour them. I don't know. So you get a student journal in these and the student journals are labeled. This one is from grades three to six and they have one that is level seven and eight if you wanted to do it with older kids. And you can do this with all of your kids at the same time. So I wish I would have found this sooner. That's the only bummer here. I wish I would have found it sooner. So the student journals is gonna have all the pages that you would normally have to make copies of in the loose ones. And it has even beautiful pictures. Just so excited. So we have, I have one student doing this one this year. It's just gonna be me and her. But I may make my older kids listen. I haven't decided how I'm gonna do it yet. But these are the fun little books that came with this one.
And then another person we learn about at CC is Archimedes, a famous inventor. So I'm definitely going to read this read aloud, as a read aloud as well. I'm really excited about that. So I'm going to be doing both of those. Another couple of units that I got that I'm just going to sprinkle in whenever I get time that I am excited about is safety. Just looking through this, I think there's things that I need to go over with my kiddos and that I need to address that maybe I'm not sure if they know very well. So definitely want to. This is from grades three to eight. My, I'm making my high schooler do this. I got all three of them one of these and we'll probably try to cram this in this summer before we start back official school. And they each have their own journal. And this one comes with a book on cyber safety. So it covers that topic. The Turnaway Game. This is just, when I read this book, I almost melted. It's so beautiful. And it is about protecting your eyes, turning away when you see something that you shouldn't see. And this one, A Mushroom Walk, is about this mom taking these two little kiddos through the forest to teach them about mushrooms that are poison and mushrooms that are not. But along the way, she teaches you about things that are inappropriate and where people are not supposed to see you. That's not okay. What is okay along this walk? And so amazing. So I'm um, really pumped about that, that it goes into those tiny things as well. Let's see here, cyber safety. Some other things it goes over is fire safety, water safety, electrical safety, natural disaster safety, God gave me a body, safe at home alone, kitchen safety, technology, media, and peer pressure, and gun safety. So those are all the topics that's going to be going on in this. And if I don't get to this this summer, I'll just put it in my morning basket and we'll do it after we do Bible in our morning time. So another one that I'm going to do, haven't decided when this may make it into the summer, but this is their maturation. I've heard it's incredible looking at it. It looks incredible, but it's a sexual reproduction unit study. And I think we're about to the point where it needs to happen. So I'll let you guys know how all these are. And if you have any questions, let me know in the comments or just, let, yeah, let me know. And hopefully I'm not forgetting something, <laughs> but I hope that you have a wonderful rest of your day. And thank you guys for hanging out with me and this annoying fly that has flown around me the entire time that I've been here. Oh, but what are you using for your 2022 and 2023 school year? I would love to know. Bye.